Well, welcome back, Blade fans. We've got a bonanza of blades for you today. Yes, we do. I may have to do this in several installments or um, shifts or episodes. Nah, I think I'll get it done all in one shot. Shooting. I've got 10 knives on the table. I am uh, putting these up before you as high end including custom and high-end production knives. Indeed, most of them are um, custom knives. Most of them are handmade custom knives. Uh, of the three and a half to four inch persuasion, let's say three inch to four inch persuasion, they can be pocketed, they can be tucked in the waistband, they can be put up on the belt, it can be dropped in a jacket pocket. They can be, in some cases, uh, even hung around the neck, I would suppose, although I don't like that way of carrying. And I want to do two things here. Uh, I'm proposing these as uh, everyday carry uh, for both uh, EDC, utility-type tasks, as well as uh, tactical defensive tasks. And you know what I mean by that. It's what Tim Kell likes to call a get-off-me knife. Well, since we mentioned Tim Kell, how about the Nighthawk from T. Kell Knives? And the two things I wanted to do is talk about the knife and its ergonomics and the profile and so forth, as well as the sheath, because you know why? Some of the sheaths on pretty expensive knives are starting to irk me. I feel they could be better. This isn't one of them. <laughs> Absolutely not. Tim gives you these, uh, this ramp here with jimping on it for push off. Beautiful release. I mean, a good sheath for me has to be relatively thick kydex, not overly thick. I don't know how thick kydex can get. Um, needs to be relatively thick and stable so that you get that snap and you get that snap on and off just like that and you get zero rattle like this one let's talk about the knife itself and i'm going to do my very best to keep this table organized with 10 knives on it and I added a knife or two near the end because I felt that I needed to include some manufacturers and makers that I didn't. Um, we have a beautiful Burl G10 here on this one, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on them or I'll be here literally forever for hours and hours talking about these knives. Uh, this is going to have to be an overview video. I'm not going to measure things up for you. If you want to know about any one of these knives, you are free to look them up on my channel. I'm hoping you know how to do that, and I don't need to instruct you on in how to do that. I mean, if you're unless you're brand new to YouTube, you don't know how. But um, if you get to my channel and use a little magnifying glass, you should be able to find anything using certain keywords. This is the TKL Nighthawk. It's a Tonto. It's about a four-inch blade. One thing I may do is just give you a quick overall eight inches on this one and three and three quarters right to the handle. So we've got an edge about three and a half ish. Nice ramp there, fairly smooth, but that's okay. Um, knives with rings on them, aside from karambits, I'm starting to get away from. What I want them to do is when I hold them this way, I want them to be 45 degrees. This is not quite making it, but you know, this is again for me, other people may like this, you know? that you're going to cut out and you're going to jab down at this angle. I like to have the knife here. And also, if a knife has a ring, it doesn't mean you have to use it and put your pinky through it or your index finger through it. That's a TKL Nighthawk. It is high quality. It is uh, ADC RV on this one, I believe, and with a nickel boron coating. Um, amazing knife. As far as a tough knife goes, Use it anywhere all the time. Hard to go wrong with TKL. Made in the USA down in Georgia. Tim Kell is the proprietor and the maker. 
he is just turning out scads of new designs these days. I'm going to hop over to another custom knife. And this is the Carl Jr. by Auxiliary Designs. Uh, Michael Jarvis is the owner and the knife maker. As far as I know, these are ground by hand. A number of companies here are making their knives either through a third party uh, at a very high end, like Fox or Lion Steel in the case of Bastinelli, or um, on CNC machines, as in the case with Compliance Edge. And, and if I'm incorrect on that, let me know. But as far as I know, um, custom made would be unique designs made uh, either machine or by hand and um, custom made. I mean, a handmade rather, such as this one, means uh, the maker ground it by hand with his own two little hands. Look at that beautiful stone pattern there. This is a uh, AELB. This is AEBL. I'm always getting that wrong. AEBL blade, high stain resistance, and holds a very tough edge. I think these are at least 60 Rockwell. Beautiful stone wash, stone pattern. Look at that. And one of the most comfortable knives on the table for me because these knives have to fit you. What fits me may not fit somebody else. Here's an example of what I was talking about. Look at that. That's the 90 degrees that I want in Pical grip. Even though the edge is out, that's fine. I still have that stabbing ability. And with this one, you still have a great utility ability with the use of that point. You got an extremely sharp edge out of that AEBL. And look at this incredible on this one. It's just dressed up beautifully with this carbon fiber that almost looks like a fat carbon fiber. In fact, it might be. It's just, I'm not sure. Beautiful rock pattern. I'm a sucker for rock pattern. A lot of people feel all oh, rock patterns, you know, passe and all that, but highly recommended. I didn't put the full size Carl in there because it's an inch longer and I'm trying to stay small with these, even though some may be four inches, such as the case with compliance edges, DCK. I was turned on to this company by, uh, None other than Tomas Alas at the Tactical Tavern. Uh, this has been a tremendous knife, and God Almighty has it gotten uh, responses on uh, Instagram and YouTube. I mean, it's uh, hitting high numbers as far as views go, and that's always a good thing. But sometimes you can hit high numbers with views and on something that maybe that uh, the person that put it up doesn't like, and that's far from the case with me. A lot of people wonder if this jimping hurts you. It doesn't, but your thumb ain't going anywhere. And he does the same thing on the pommel. And this is a beautiful knife for Pical because I got the double-edged version. He gives you a mirror edge. It's sharp as hell, even though that grind isn't especially high. But perfect Pical knife, just the right fits right in the hand, locks right in. It's just gorgeous. Also got the rock pattern going on here and fine for EDC tasks, fine for point use. He's got a bronze Cerakote going on here. Gray handle. I just love the color combo. Had to get it because of the color combo and the fact that it's 3V. 3V, hard to pass that up, right? I didn't include any double-edged knives today. Those are daggers. I'm going to do a separate uh, video on those. But let me keep moving on up the line here. Mini Kaiken from Williams out of Sleepner Steel, made by Lion Steel. It's just a beautiful, traditional Tanto-style knife. Osorako Zukuri is the blade style with that long armor-piercing point. And that backward grind deviation there, compound grind, where you've got a second belly or a second point rather, 
it just pierces like crazy. And you've got that V swedge on the top, traditional Japanese again. Uh, this is a Chris Williams design. It is, uh, this one's got uh, micarta handle on it. Very nice. Grooved. Um, Jim Williams, uh, James Williams shows palming the knife to thrust with it. Because a lot of people say, well, you know, it doesn't have a guard. I'm going to slip onto the blade. Uh, you should see him drive it through steel, uh, sheet steel, by simply by palming the blade. So that's a fallacy if you think your hand's going to slide on the blade. Uh, take a look at a few of James Williams' videos. He is the sword master and also the tanto master. This is gorgeous. If you can get your hands on it, I also have a folding version with um, this miracle carbon fiber. It's all... Uh, it's a full carbon fiber integral frame locking handle. And if you haven't seen that video, check it out. Osorako Zukuri, um, beautiful neutral, 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 neutral. You can go that way. You can go that way. Probably the most versatile knife on the table. Hold it any way you want and it will like you. <laughs> Oh, Sorako Zukuri by Williams. Wow. Here is a design by Microtech. This is the Mini Warcom. This is their take on a um, Warncliffe-style blade, I would call it. If you want to, if you got to call it a reverse Tonto, okay, there you go. But it's got a bowed top if you do. Um Doing that clip there doesn't make it necessarily a Tonto, even if you reverse it, but I guess that's becoming a thing. So I'm going to get off my horse on that one. You like jimping? If you like jimping, buy this knife. <laughs> By the way, this is a Bowler M390. Not the MK, no. This is uh, not the MK that they're using on their Ramlock models, on their folders. It's a fairly stout little heavy little knife. It's got a blade of three and three quarters again, and overall eight and a quarter. Most of these are about an eight inch knife overall. That means you can drop them in the pocket if you choose. You can put them on the belt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A little thicker handle here. Got some great G10 going on. Got a lot of sculpting. Um, this jimping works for you no matter how you hold it. So again, this is another one that if you choose, you can easily hold it point down edge in. It's not too uncomfortable. Uh, you do have a palm swell there that sort of beckons you to hold it, you know, that way. But you've really got rounded sides on both. And if you want to take it apart, you're going to need a tri-wing tool. They're starting to get away from that, but not on this one. And there is a lanyard hole and a nice pommel, just enough sticking out there in case you wanted to uh, have it talk to somebody for you. Nice go forward thumb there. Not really, not really going to want to do that, maybe. Although they've uh, brought that choil forward. So it isn't going to cut you if you decide you want to stick your finger there, but I wouldn't go too much further. Um, beautiful swedge at the top. Beautiful inline point and a useful point for cutting. High grind, useful for just about any EDC tasks. And this is a takeoff on their regular uh, war comp, their regular um, SOCOM Mini fixed blade. All right, where are we? Bastinelli. Can't talk about tactical art without talking about Bastinelli, and this is the chopper. I love the feel of this handle. Look how thin that is. That is incredibly thin, but you don't feel like you're not holding onto the knife because look how tall the handle is and how sculpted it is. This just melts into your hand. It is incredible. Only thing I question on it is I'm not a big trailing point user because I like to have the force going forward into the cut and not have to go through this. However, 
This will hold beautifully in Pical, and you've got the point just about where you want it for that downward curving thrust. Can you cut with it? Oh my God, absolutely. Look at it. The grind goes all the way straight up to the top. This is the black blade version. There is a stone washed version as well. Uh, and the reason I include this is these are up in the uh, $300 uh, dollar category. So um, I'm going to do my very best to give you links for all 10 knives. It'll take me an hour just to do that, I'm sure. But I know you'll complain if I don't give you links because it seems like people can't look things up on uh, at the internet these days. <laughs> yeah, I got hell for it a few years ago for not giving links. So now I, I give links to everything. There is a great... Um, one thing he does is give you lots of jimping, even jimping. You can see it right up near the point. So if you're doing that kind of point work, you got some grip for your finger. And really there is jimping built into the handle in a lot of strategic places. So comfortable this knife is. Another custom. So that was a high-end production. Here is a custom. Here is my one and only knife. From Aaron Bieber, AB Knives. I was turned on to him by Bob DeMarco, none other than the knife junkie himself. Magna Cut on this baby. Yes, Magna Cut with a, a um, Tsukamaki wrap. He does beautiful wrap over ray skin. Mine's all blacked out. And this has got what he calls his deep finish on it. You can see those speckles. And that dark gray finish, it's actually dark gray rather than black. This is such a confidence-inspiring knife. And this is another one that just grips so well in the hand. These are all finger grooves, no matter how you hold it. No matter how you hold it. And that's perfect for Pical. I love that right angle. Need that right angle. I don't want it like that. I want it like that. I want it like that. Got it? Um, big old finger choil here, if you want to call it that. He's subdued the heel of the blade there so you don't cut yourself, and yet you can use it as a stop. Um, it works, okay? It works. He said he's taken a lot of time on this one. By the way, the model number is the 302 from Aaron Bieber, AB Knives, down in Pennsylvania. USA made, handmade in Pennsylvania, beautiful high grind. And this swedge in here, just a factoid, is a hollow. Harder to see on my black inversion than on Bob DeMarco's uh, satin version that he got as a birthday present to himself. <laughs> this one has a uh, crescent profile to it, which means when you hold it, the point is slightly down. So it lends itself more to a cross palm grip, more of a saber grip than a hammer grip. Although you can get it into a hammer grip pretty well. It still kind of leans forward a little bit though. That is the AB Knives 302. Moving up the line here, we can't talk about custom tactical knives without talking about our good friend, Dirk Pinkerton. I got one on the way from him. Uh, hopefully, I'll see it soon. Um, the Fire Ant, and we'll be talking about that when it comes in. This one he calls the Urban Nomad, and this is from Magnica, too. It is a beautiful, high-grind, belt satin finish knife. Gorgeous. In his Warncliffe style that he loves so much. With a slightly downturned handle. Very thin. Very ergonomic. Not one of my most ergonomic knives, again, for me, but I do lock into it really, really well. And yes, it will work in Pical. Uh, Dirk tends to like, on his smaller knives, a shorter handle, as does Tikel. Um, I don't always like a handle that doesn't leave me much room other than, you know, barely get my fingers on there. But, you know... It's minimalist, so it keeps the overall uh, length of the knife small. Look at the beautiful uh, two-layer G10 on this one. Just gorgeous. And it is just sharp and piercy as the Dickens. While at the same time, you see, there's that force forward through the tip cutting that I'm talking about. 
on the uh, almost a sax style, but we'll call it a Warncliffe. Speaking of a sax style blade, another Bastinelli. Oh, he's lucky. He's got two on the table today, but they're two of my favorites. Also, an incredibly ergonomic handle. He knows how to do that so well. It looks like it's going to be uncomfortable, but you can hold it back here if you had to. You can hold it here. You can hold it here, or you can choke all the way up. And it works extremely well in Pical grip. So this we'd call more of a sack style. He uses it on so many of his combat blades, fixed end, uh, also on the, uh, the folders. Look at the jimping. This is made, um, this one, uh, it's on here somewhere. Or is it? it? May not be here. So I believe this is a fox made knife. I'm going to see it's tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah, it's Fox. Okay. So this one is the Foreigner M390 made by Fox. God, is it comfortable for a thin, small knife. It feels full size in your hand. That's the same way that the chopper feels. Chopper is a little bigger than this one. About an inch bigger, actually. Okay. So extremely lightweight too. It's like nothing's there. You put this in the sheath, drop it in the pocket. Speaking of sheaths, Mr. Bastinelli, give us some decent sheaths. This stuff is too thin. It very often doesn't give you a secure hold. Hear the rattle? Not that I need to sneak up on people, but I don't like that. And they're all this thin kydex. I don't know if it's Bolteron or kydex. It are beautiful knives. But the sheaths are... Here, here's the one for the chopper. You've got to do something about these sheaths. You've got to. Make a sheath like TKL. Make a sheath like Microtech. Make a sheath like uh, any one of these knives on the table here. Especially like Compliance Edge or like uh, auxiliary manufacturing, make a really nice sheath. Make a sheath like Aaron Bieber. Come on, guys. Don't cheap out on the sheaths. Give us a good, substantial sheath. It's not going to add to the weight to give it, make it a little bigger. It's not going to uh, do anything other than give you this real lock-in capability here. No rattle. Beautiful, beautiful sheath uh, for the uh, auxiliary manufacturing one. All right, off my soapbox, off my rant. Well, how about a sheath like the RMJ Unme? Beautifully done. Beautifully, beautifully, beautifully done. With just a little thicker kydex and some beautiful molding of that sheath, it's just locked in there. This, again, is a Japanese style, more, a little more upswept. Again, a little more crescent-shaped in the other direction. Notice that the, um, this guy here, the 302, is more angled down with that crescent, and this is more angled up with that crescent. Now, put 302 back there. This is a MagnaCut blade, MagnaCut from RMJ. It's a gorgeous knife. It is really, really gorgeous. Thin, but grippy handle with that 3D milling on there. Contoured. Comes in three handle colors, an olive, a black, and this uh, coyote. Very nice, secure finger choil there. Small run of jimping that's very grippy. Excellent stone wash, not going to show sh signs of wear very easily at all, and just wicked slicey sharp. The Unne by RMJ down in, uh, I think RMJ is down in uh, Chattanooga area. I think they're somehow allied with uh, Chattanooga Leather because I know they uh, they're sheaths for them by Chattanooga Leather. 
Well, there they all are, backing out a little bit and trying not to show you too many sheets. Those are my selections for my top 10. What's my favorite? Oh my God, what's my favorite? Uh, I'm going to have to give you three favorites, right? The uh, Osorako Zucuri by Williams. The uh, Compliance Edge by uh, Compliance Edge. The DCK, DCK. This is 3V. And the Carl Jr. by Auxiliary. Uh, my favorites. And, oh, God, I have to add a fourth. Do I have to add a fourth? As far as the feel goes, def definitely the Foreigner, but they got to make a better sheath for it. Okay. And um, these two guys, too. <laughs> That's about half of them. Okay. All right, then there are no favorites. I rotate these guys fairly regularly. Tell me what you think, you all. I went uh, way up to 25 minutes, so I know you'll be doing a lot of fast forwarding and skipping through this video. So if you have questions, it's probably already answered in the video and you're gonna be asking me in the comments, but hey, that's okay too. We love you. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back soon.